Hey everybody, it's Kyla. Welcome to my channel where I talk about the stock market and the economy amongst other things. I want to talk about the housing crisis today. So I made a TikTok yesterday talking about the housing crisis and I pointed to demographics and private equity as some of the reasons that we do have a housing crisis, right? When you look at how people grow wealth in the United States, the bottom 50% primarily grow wealth through owning real estate. So being able to own a home is really important. And of course, if you look at this graph that shows how wealth is compressed in the United States, if you own a business or you own stocks, you're more likely to be wealthy. That brings up a whole conversation of how do we get people to own more stocks? How do we make sure that people can have equity in the businesses that they work for and with? But that's a whole separate conversation. There's an ad coming. We live in the era of distraction. Anytime you want, you can just scroll. But what if you didn't? The FT Edit app is the solution. It brings you a collection of eight daily articles with thoughtful reporting and analysis from the experts at the Financial Times. Business, lifestyle, tech, art, and more. Satisfy your curiosity and minimize distractions with curated reporting just for you. The FT Edit app knows that you don't want endless pings to your devices of breaking news, but rather a comprehensive understanding of why the news matters for you. Click the link to download the FT Edit app and receive a free 30-day trial. Just pointing to demographics and private equity as the main reason that we have a housing crisis is it's, it's reductive. It's reductive. And it is things like zoning. So if you think about like what we can build and what we can't build, there's land use regulation that's in place that prevents certain types of buildings from being built. And then there's NIMBYism where people are like, not in my backyard. I'd rather make a lot of money on my house when I'm dead than have people have affordable housing now. How dare you? How dare you think of anything but me? And then there's the boomers, right? So there is an element of demographics. So 39 million boomers have no mortgage. They're just sitting 100% equity on their homes, like just vibes. Why would they sell, right? And of course now you have golden handcuffs for a lot of people who are not boomers, but bought a house at 3%, 2% mortgage rates, they're not going to be selling either with mortgage rates at 6%. So there's so many different things leading to the housing crisis, but really the main thing is regulation. Really the main thing is policy. And there was this really good article by Jerusalem in the Atlantic where they talk about like, it is, you know, you can point to corporate landlords, you can point to private equity, and it is a problem, but they're more responding to the situation versus causing it. And I think that's a really good point where ho housing is unaffordable because of undersupply. So institutional investors are not going into the market thinking that they're going to make supply worse. They're saying like, oh, we're going to buy up everything that we can because we have a housing crisis. The Blackstone slide where they're like, the housing crisis is good for our rental fundamentals. It's just how Blackstone works, right? Like it's, um, it sucks a lot. And it sucks that they're out here making slide decks and being like, look, unaffordable housing, that's our business. And they go into mobile home parks, they go into nursing homes, and they, they, they take up so much space and they take up so much money. But really the way that we solve the housing crisis is by increasing supply, eliminating different constraints, um, not banning duplexes, triplexes, and multifamily buildings. And then also getting around obstructing new housing with NIMBYism, which oftentimes will use, like we saw at UC Berkeley, they'll use environmental regulations to be like, well, no, you can't build more. A bunch of students are trying to come here, but no, you can't have more housing. It's just, it's legalizing building, zoning, permitting, parking reforms, ending parking mandates. Nathan Albeck has a bunch of stuff. And then there was an Odd Lots episode that talked about, there was a landlord that was being interviewed and he was like, yeah, like it's kind of crazy that we don't have rent control. And I'm not advocating for rent control because as we know, price controls can distort markets in really weird ways, but renters have no benefit in this society. There's an NPR article talking about Matthew Desmond's new book. And he's talking about, you know, how we have this really big disparity between homeowners and renters. I'm a renter. And for homeowners, they get this mortgage interest rate deduction, which is kind of a huge cost to the government. A mortgage rate interest deductions is about $190 billion a year. So these are usually like six figure income families getting a huge, huge deduction. And we've only dedicated $50 billion to affordable housing. So we're subsidizing housing for, you know, people who own homes by about 200 billion a year, but we're only advocating, you know, 50 billion towards actually just building more affordable housing. As Desmond writes in this NPR article, it talks about, you know, if we didn't have so many evictions, if we didn't have families paying, you know, more than 50% of their income towards rent, maybe it'd be okay to have a mortgage interest rate deduction, but it's, it, it's very painful right now for a lot of people, exorbitant for a lot of people. It's, it's going down, but it's subsidizing affluence rather than alleviating poverty. Build to rent is the growing category now where they're building homes more for rental purposes than for ownership purposes. And, you know, developers got toasted 
over the past couple of years. So there isn't the incentive for them to build more housing because they want to make a profit. And so there's all these different threads. And I know I've, I've been kind of like bouncing around and I promise I'll tie everything up in a neat little bow. But, but the thing is we have a housing crisis. The housing crisis is primarily driven by a lack of supply. The lack of supply is leading to investors like Blackstone, other private equity firms coming in and taking advantage of price distortion. The price distortion is pricing more and more people out of the market, but it's not causing the price distortions themselves. And as we let this supply and demand misbalance get even worse, it becomes even more unaffordable for people to achieve that quote unquote American dream. The way that we can take a step back and reevaluate this is through looking at policies like how we're treating different tax deductions, whether that be reallocating some of the mortgage interest rate deduction, tax break towards renters, helping people get equity in the businesses that they work for, building more homes, re-looking at how we zone different places, re-looking at permitting, re-looking at parking, like do we need as much parking as we have? They're relatively simple to sort of design policy around to make it seem a little bit more um, better. The housing crisis and the way that we fix it is by building more housing. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for spending time with me. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.